We have quite a few things to go over with this team, so let's just hop straight into it. As you can see on the screen, Michael Conforto has been claimed off waivers from the Texas Rangers. They waived him. We claim him. He is a guy who I feel like we could use some more pop here in the major leagues. He's a guy who has pop. He's got some good ratings. He can play the field a little bit as well. They've had him split between the majors and AAA this season. We are going to have him in the major leagues here to start. And he will be wearing number 88 here with Cincinnati. He's worn eight throughout his career. He wore eight in uh, college, I believe. Number eight is retired with Cincinnati, so we're just doubling it up and giving him 88. And then a little bit later on, we are now into May, late May here in the season, starting to play a little bit better, sitting at 23 and 33. Obviously not the greatest record, but better than we were. And unfortunately, Ellie De La Cruz has really, really struggled this season as a 592 OPS and 170 ABs, or 175 ABs currently on a cold streak, while Brian Anderson has been solid with a 783 OPS, and then uh, Zach McKinstry has also been very good with a four-digit OPS, only in 57 ABs. We're going to give him more time because Ellie De La Cruz is going down to AAA. He's going to try to figure some stuff out. He will be back, absolutely. We're just going to try to get him figuring some stuff out, and then once he's on a hot streak, maybe we end up bringing him back this season. Nolan Jones also going down to AAA so we can get some more posi positional versatility on our bench and just he's still not hitting. Well, Max Schrock is coming back up to the big leagues here for that positional versatility. So if we take a look at the lineup update here, Brian Anderson is now playing third base. Zach McKinstry is playing right field. Conforto is at DH while Jonathan India is now on the bench and Austin Hendrick is the fourth outfielder. And we are about to take on the Brew Crews here, so take a look at the New Look Beer Makers roster. They have Brandon Lau on this team. They signed him in the offseason. He's been an extremely consistent bat throughout the series for the Rays. Now with the Brew Crew, they signed him to a four-year deal. Their pitching, on the other hand, is now extremely, extremely mediocre. It's literally just a bunch of, like, low 70 overall guys. And then they got Shane Bieber, who they picked up in the offseason in the rotation. And they still have Devin Williams at the back end of their bullpen. But literally everyone else, not great. Well, in their lineup, for whatever reason, they replaced Willie Adamas with Paul DeYoung because he keeps getting shots to be like an everyday shortstop for teams, despite him not being a good baseball player. And they did lose Willie Adamas, but they did pick up Brandon Lau, and they still have Luis Arias, who has been a pretty consistent bat for them throughout this series. The Reds hit the road here and head out to Wisconsin for an NL Central matchup against the Milwaukee Brewers here at American Family Field. On the hill for the Brew Crew on the day is the right-hander. Signed in the offseason, Shane Bieber came over from the Guardians. Take a look at the Reds lineup listed 1-2-9. Well, on the hill for them will be the right-hander in Tyler Malley, making his 12th start of the season. Also, take a look at the Brewers lineup listed 1-9. They still have Hunter Renfro in that lineup as well. We'll start things off bottom of the first inning. It is going to be Wilmer Defoe going down looking. Could not pull the trigger on the old Uncle Charlie. Then it's going to be another strikeout. This time it's the slider as Luis Arias could not hold up. So top of the second now. Zach McKinstry, two outs, checks his swing, but goes around on the drop third strike, but it gets away from the catcher, so McKinstry reaches first base. Then it brings up Michael Conforto, who pokes one through the left side here with his new ball club. First and second here for Cincinnati brings up Anderson, grounds one back to Bieber, tosses over to first, and it pulls Keston Hira off the bag. So bases are drunk here with two outs. First pitch swinging Austin Hendrick. Bye-bye. See you later. That one is way out of here. Upper deck grand salami for Austin Hendrick, and he has busted this game wide open here in the second inning. 4 nothing on Hendrick's seventh home run of the season. Taylor Walls kept the inning alive after, or he tried to keep the inning alive as he flies him out to deep center field, but Wilmer Defoe somehow makes a fantastic catch up against the wall there. Now, bottom of the second, Maley goes right, or Malley goes right back to work as he strikes out Lau. Also, Keston Hira for at number two. And then it would bring up Hunter Renfro as Malley blows that speedball right by you. Strikes at the side. 4-0 is still the score here through two innings. Move things on to the top of the fourth now. 
McKinstry leading off the inning this time. He's going to blue point in front of Defoe, and that's a base knock as he has himself a leadoff single. Then it brings up Conforto as McKinstry diving back into first base there in the pickoff attempt. Somehow was hurt on that play. Luckily, it wasn't too, too serious, but he does have to come out of the game here as Adrian Merced comes on to pinch run for him over at first base. And Merced would immediately do what he does and goes and swipes second base. Gets himself into scoring position here. So runner on second, nobody out for Conforto. He hits a line drive, but it's going to be right at the right fielder Renfro. They do not tag up Merced, so he sticks, stays put at second base. Now it's Brian Anderson at the dish. And a ball gets past the catcher, so Merced moves up to third base. He's now 90 feet away. And Brian Anderson, 2-1 count, pokes one into right field, drives another one. Another run. It's now 5-0 here for the Reds. Amir Garrett came on in the top of the ninth inning for the Brew Crew. And facing Adrian Merced here lead, er, with one out, he's going to come up and bloop one into right field. That's going to land in for a base knock, so he's on first base. Then it's going to be him going and swiping second again. His second stolen bag of the game. Now 11 on the season for him. And then he wasn't done there. He's going to go and swipe third base as well. No throw because the throw gets away from the catcher. So now 12 stolen bases for Merced. And then Conforto ground ball out to the right side. That drives in a run. It's now a 6-0 lead here for the Reds. Malley still on in the ninth inning. Walks the man with one out with uh, Joel Avalos. So he takes his base. And then they would take him out and bring on Ron Marinaccio here for the 16th time this season. Looking to close things out here with a six-run lead. And it would be Wilmer Defoe singling. Avalos has some fleet feet, so he goes first to third for the Brewers. Sets up runners on the corners here with one out for Luis Arias. And he also goes back up the middle. That's going to drive in a run. It's now a 6-1 ball game. Brings up Brandon Lau. He's going to hit a ball over the head of the left fielder, Arias, who just cannot make the play out there for whatever reason. But because they thought he was going to make it, only one run is going to come around. And he just doesn't get in there as Wilmer Defoe gets gunned down on the throw from the relay man. And then Maraccio would strike out Hira as he ends the ball game. The Reds close the door and win this one 6-2-1 here in Milwaukee. Tyler Malley gets player of the game honors. He went eight in a third inning strong, only gave up three hits, struck out seven Brewers batters, only walked one and only allowed one earned run. Austin Hendrick busted this game wide open in the second inning with that grand slam. And Shane Bieber, despite giving up the grand slam and not having a great start, only one of his runs were actually earned. And now before we move things on here to the next game, we do have a few things to go over. The first one being the 2025 first year player draft. We have the 12th overall pick this season here at the Reds. And with that pick, we selected third baseman, 18 year old third baseman, Gabriel Gonzalez. After that, it was Marcos Heel, a 20 year old infielder. Then Javier Ramirez, a 22 year old third baseman. And then four straight pitchers in right handed starter, 20 year old Sam Jordan, then James Walsh, 23-year-old left-handed reliever, Joey Murphy, 22-year-old right-handed reliever, and then to end things out, it would be Glenn Varis, a 20-year-old right-handed reliever. As always, we will go more in-depth on these guys in either prospect profile videos of their own or in a future minor league update video. But we are now here into June of the 2025 campaign, and Logan Allen, unfortunately, has been sent back to AAA. Just for whatever reason, it seems like that appearance he had against the Nationals just totally derailed his good start here to the big leagues uh, here in 2025. 21 walks in 26 innings, just not getting it done. So he's going to go down back to AAA. And Jarrett Ross is now up in the big leagues in the bullpen, the starter, now pitching in the bullpen for us here in the bigs. And he's actually had nine scoreless innings in the, uh, in the big leagues here since he's gotten promoted. While Austin Hendrick, unfortunately, is also going to join De La Cruz down in AAA Louisville, just going to work on some stuff. He will also be back at some point. 
And that means that Alex Call is going to be getting the call here from AAA. He comes up making his MLB debut at 30 years of age. He was signed in the offseason. He's a guy that I noticed when I was scrolling through the league leaders around the minor leagues at the end of last season. And he was peppered all over the International League league leaders here. I believe he had like the highest average OBP and OPS. So when I saw he was available in the offseason to sign, we jumped on that and brought him to be a depth piece for us. And now he's going to be up in Cincinnati. While Jose Torres is going back down to AAA and Angelo Castellanos is coming up to the major leagues to take his spot as the backup infielder, Conforto for now is just going to be sent down. We might keep him on the uh, the organization for a little bit longer, but for now he's just going to be in AAA. Wasn't really doing it for me in the few weeks he was up, so we're just not going to mess around with him anymore. And Ken Suzuki, who has been hitting well in AAA, 810 OPS and 197 ABs. He is going to come up to the big leagues here. He will be wearing number 36 for the Reds. And Gregory Soto is the one being DFA to open up the spot on the 40-man for Suzuki. So once again, another lineup change here for the Reds. Changing the vibe up a bit. We're just trying to see if we can turn the tide here, start playing better baseball with some new guys in the everyday lineup. The Reds hitting the road once again, but this time it's heading down to Florida to take on the Tampa Bay Rays here in some interleague action. Toe in the slab for the Red Legs on the day is the flamethrowing right-hander Hunter Green, making his 15th start of the season. He will be opposed by another hard-throwing right-hander in Shane Boz of the Tampa Bay Rays. Take a look at the Reds lineup. On the day listed 1-9, Alex Call making his debut in center field. So top half of the first inning, Taylor Walls getting things started off with a base knock. The leadoff hit there gets himself on first. Now with one out in the inning, Walls is going to move up to second base as the pitch gets away from the former Red farmhand Scott Manaya catching for Tampa Bay. And then Tyler Stevenson pokes one through the right side. That's going to score the fleet-footed Walls. It's an RBI single, makes it a 1-0 Reds lead. Two out in the inning now it's Johnny Fagan who is plunked on the thigh makes it first and second here with two outs brings up Ken Suzuki recently called up he's gonna slice one down the right field line that's gonna get into the corner and it's gonna score a run and make it a 2-0 lead here for the Reds so two runners in scoring position as Ken Suzuki picks up his first career major league hit and RBI brings up Brian Anderson and he gets plunked as well that's two hit batsmen in the inning for Shane Boz. Brings up Max Schrock, who cannot do anything, just strikes out with the bases drunk. But it's still a 2-0 lead here for Cincinnati. Now top of the third, Tyler Stevenson ripping one into left field. Gets it past the third baseman here for a leadoff single. Brings up Zach McKinstry as the pitch gets away from Manaya and brings uh, allows Stevenson to move to the second base. But it doesn't even matter because Zach McKinstry powers a hanging curveball into the right field seats. Just barely gets over the wall, but it counts. A two-run blast off the bat of McKinstry makes it a 4 nothing lead here for the Reds. And they were not done. Ken Suzuki, he gets a hanging curveball and he blasts that into right center field up against the wall. He's going to hustle into second, but he's not stopping there. He's got the fleet feet, and he's showing them off. Slides into third with a one-out triple. Then it brings up Brian Anderson, who's also going bridge. This one over the left field fence. Another two-run shot in the inning. Brian Anderson makes it a 6 nothing game here for the Reds. Not the greatest start for Shane Boz. Move things on to the bottom of the fourth, where the Rays start doing a bit, a few bit of a few things here. As I can't talk on the day. Walks Rayleigh. Then with two outs, it's a grand ball over to Walls. Dives, but cannot feel the cleanly. The rare, not clean diving play from Taylor Walls. So two runners on, two outs. Brings up Scott Manaya, the former red farmhand. He bloops one into right field. That scores a run. It's now a 6-1 game. Brings up James McCann, DHing on the day. He's going to poke one into right field as well. And it's now a 6-2 ball game here in Tampa Bay. Green would clutch up, though, and get a ground ball back to his cell for the third out of the inning, so nobody else comes in to score. 
Bottom of the fifth, it's Robert Hassel, one of the Rays recently acquired players. They swapped prospects with the uh, Padres. Greg Jones went to San Diego, and they get Bobby Hassel. So it's now a one-man-on situation, and Randy Arozarena strokes one into the left field seats. That's a two-run blast, and it's now a 6-4 ball game here in Tampa Bay. That would end the day for Hunter Green as Jarrett Ross, the Ohio native, enters the game here for the Reds out of the armbar and looking to keep his scoreless streak alive. And he does just that as he would get the Australian Curtis Mead to pop up to the first baseman. So Mitch Keller now on out of the bullpen here for Cincinnati in the seventh inning. And he would also face the Australian Curtis Mead, but with runners on the corners, and he blows that speedball by him. A strike three ends the inning, keeps it at a 6-4 ball game. Nick Whitgren now on for the Rays in the top of the eighth. Runner on first, Alex Call at the dish, and he rises to the occasion. Rips one into the left center field gap. That is going to score a runner all the way from first base. A RBI double for Alex Call makes it a 7-4 ball game. Mitch Keller still on the hill here in the bottom of the eighth, and he gives up a two-run blast. So now it's suddenly back to being a one-run game, or I think it's a one-run game for the first time this whole game is James McCann homers now it's DeAndre Foster coming on for the ninth inning trying to close the door here with a one run lead and he does just that gets Rayleigh to pop up to Taylor Walls puts it away easy play for the sure fielded or the sure handed shortstop I should say as the Reds do hold on to win this game here in some interleague action they win it seven to six here over the Tampa Bay Rays Ken Suzuki, the Hawaiian native, recent call-up from AAA Louisville, gets player of the game honors, three for four in the day with a triple and a double. Brian Anderson with a two-run home run, so did Zach McKinstry. Taylor Walls goes four for five on the day. 16 total hits for the Reds on the day, 12 for the Rays, and the Reds just outlast them seven to six. So with that being said, that's going to wrap things up here for this edition of the Cincinnati Reds franchise here on MLB The Show 22. I've been your host, Jerseyborn, and I am saying, Columbus, he signed with Columbus. Columbus.